Hey everyone, welcome to theCUBE's presentation of the AWS Startup Showcase, Cybersecurity. This is season three, episode three of the ongoing series that features exciting startups from the AWS ecosystem. I'm your host, Lee Smartin, pleased to be joined by Chris Lamb, the Chief Product Officer at Halcyon. Chris is here to talk about defeating ransomware in the real world. Chris, welcome to theCUBE. Great to have you on this very important topic discussion today. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Of course. Before we dig into the current state of the cybersecurity landscape, tell the audience a bit about Halcyon. This was formed only two years ago, back in 2021. What do you guys do? What were some of the specific the gaps in the market where cybersecurity is con confer um, it concerned that your co-founders saw, we can fill this gap? Absolutely. Um, so it started out really around the time of, of the Colonial Pipeline incident, which a lot of, of folks, whether they're in the industry or or just follow current events, is, are obviously very aware of. Uh, and that was kind of a wake up call for uh, the founding team at Halcyon around, uh, you know, just the landscape was changing dramatically with geopolitical events, with economic macroeconomic events, uh, as well as as we, we saw, you know, a, a very acute problem uh, that was starting uh, to, to rear its head. And we also noticed that uh, that viewing kind of the, the ransomware risk through kind of the traditional lens and tools that existed out there in the market was insufficient. And that, and what I mean by that is not that, you know, there, there aren't great security products, technologies, and services out there, um, you know, that solve a lot of cybersecurity issues, but in the particular uh, context of ransomware, that because of these geopolitical events, because of these macroeconomic events that aren't transient in nature, that are kind of the new normal as, as the globe realigns, as the globe kind of digests everything that the world's gone through the last three years, first with the pandemic and then with kind of coming out of the pandemic, that conditions had changed in the risk landscape, motivations, and the business model underlying ransomware was a big kind of missing piece that people yeah. weren't thinking and talking about. And that this was really, you know, kind of how we talk about it at Halcyon is like non-governmental advanced persistent threats, if you will, where the outcome and the desire wasn't to achieve undetected access to a business and organization to steal intellectual property over years and or decades. It was, hey, how do I achieve the maximum amount of leverage as quickly as possible so I can drive real demonstrable economic returns as a right. threat actor? And that right. was very different. Yeah, you talk about the Colonial Pipeline, it sounds like being really a catalyst for Halcyon forming back in 2021. And I think that's the time frame. We've been talking about ransomware for a very long time in the cybersecurity landscape and how much it's changing. But I, I feel around the Colonial Pipeline time, that's when ransomware became a household word. And I started hearing about it in, in non-technology conversations where people were starting to become aware of it and aware of the bad actors out there had access to emerging technologies and that there were, it was so lucrative for the bad actors. Talk a little bit about the strategy and the vision of Halcyon, given the fact that there's so much, you talked about the geopolitical climate, the macroeconomic climate, and the fact that there is so much return that these guys are getting. Yeah. What's the vision and strategy of Halcyon to def help organizations defend against that persistent threat? Yeah, I, I think you're, you're, you're asking a real fundamental you know, question to our story and 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 just to what we observed in the market, and that is, um, you know, because of the nature of what you know of what is driving this this threat category or these the, you know this scenario of of cyber risk, that um, a couple things really crystallized, and that is um, for us, you know, there is no perfect security. And I know that, like, you know, I have 
immense amount of empathy for customers and partners. A lot of my, you know, being in the cybersecurity industry for 30 years personally, you know, I am, you know, very good personal friends with a lot of chief information security officers at Fortune 500s. And, and I have a lot of empathy for the job that they're responsible for and the job that them and their teams do. Um, but there's not a there's not an easy button, or there wasn't an easy button. There wasn't an approach to this particular, you know, crystallizing form of, of cyber risk that was really taking a resiliency first mindset, a failure is a net inevitable mindset and working backwards from that, you know, worst case scenario, if you have a ransomware event or you are targeted, that may be one of the worst days. If you're, you're a CISO or you're on a security team that, you know, you're going to find coming into work. Uh, and, and having that working backwards from, you know, that inevitable failure, that assum uh, assumptive position that, you know, no matter how sophisticated your security program is, no matter how many, you know, frameworks you followed or regulations you're adhering to, that, you know, you, you can't put enough gates in the system uh, and that products that existed out there that were designed to try to help mitigate some of, you know, what was unique and different about ransomware, whether it's the business model or where it's what, whether it's the technology involved, wasn't taking that approach. And so when we created, you know, the solution and the company, we really started from that failure is inevitable mindset. Let's work backwards with the goal being that we're going to we're going to we're going to you know we're going to detect and protect as much as we can and surgically focused on ransomware but we're also going to go beyond that and have our technology and our solution really assume that recovery mindset so that you know if and when you have that ransomware event that you know impacts your organization that recovery is that that first order goal and doing it safely, doing it efficiently and doing it quickly, because in most yeah. of these scenarios, like, you know, with with customers and prospects we've helped is, you know, that downtime isn't, oh, our employees can't be productive. That downtime is I'm losing two million dollars a day in revenue because i can't quote sales deals because my right. erp system is encrypted and not accessible those and are there's the whole brand there. right and then there's a the whole brand reputation nobody wants to be the next headline you know and another thing too ransomware has become a when we're gonna get hit not an are we going to get hit? It's really no organization it, it globally is safe from it. Share a little bit of the stats of ransomware and, and specifically ransomware as a service with the audience so they really understand the gravity of the situation. And then we'll kind of dig into why there's some vendor confusion out there. Yeah. So, you know, I will say as somebody that, you know, has has been a part of solving really hard, you know, cybersecurity issues for the majority of my career is um, first and foremost, you know, the, the cybersecurity industry can be a victim of its own habits to some extent. And when, you know, and I would say the first thing that you hit on that, you know, is vendor confusion. Uh, you know, cybersecurity has become a multi-billion dollar industry. Um, you know, there's products and services for everything for specific cybersecurity risks. And so it creates a lot of just, you know, if I'm a practitioner, I'm a, a chief information security officer, it creates a lot of noise. Um, you know, just being able to, you know, to sift through, you know, and understand what is actually something that'll help me mitigate this risk. What is a control that I can put in place is actually effective because we as an industry, you know, want, you know, want to elevate cybersecurity to more of a business conversation, which is, you know, and a risk conversation at the same time, not all 
you know, risks are created equal. Not all risks exist the same when you're theoretically talking about business risk and you're, and then you transition to what happens when that risk happens in the real world. There's a disconnect there. Uh, additionally, you know, in the, in, in our quest to try to make security, cybersecurity more accessible, whether that's to, you know, bring more people into the field and make it a more accessible career choice to demystify a lot of the technology because it's a very tech technical field, um, you know, and to meet, you know, we've pushed out and, and the motivation was great. Things like, you know, NIST standards and MITRE, you know, frameworks for understanding the problem space. And we get so fixated on, are we following the playbook are we following the standards that somebody has laid before me? We're not questioning and we're not taking a step back from those and 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 deconfusing the problem that you have, you know, that these organizations face and how is the most systematic way of going about preventing and responding to these types of, of, of problems like ransomware. And so it's created the kind of this, this perfect perfect environment of high noise, low signal when it comes to understanding the risk, but more importantly, what you can do about the risk. And so that, you know, that, that is probably one of the, 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 you know, one of the unique aspects of where we are today. And so you have, you know, thousands of cybersecurity um, solution providers out there saying, this is how my phishing solution stops ransomware. This is how my XYZ solution or service stops ransomware. And it's, and it just, the reality is it's not as, you know, at least with broad-based security controls that are there to, to you know, to, to try to give you as much coverage as possible, you know, the, they don't, really take into consideration the unique attributes of ransomware, of the business model, of, and you talked about it, you know, the difference between the ransomware operators, the threat actors that are engaging in the actual, you know, ransomware event, things like uh, initial access brokers, it's just a very complex topic. And when you're bombarded as a practitioner and as a CISO with all of this, you know, you you want to make it easy. You want to try to kill as many birds with a stone, so to speak, when you're deploying product or you're engaging vendors. And it's it's unfortunately it's it's a dynamic, you know, threat. It's a dynamic risk. It's a very complex kind of you know attacker supply chain. And as a result of that, it's created an environment that's that's made it really hard for, you know, for organizations to get their arm around it effectively so that right. when they do and if they do actually have they, their event, they know how to respond. They know what the playbook needs to be. And we can actively, you know, actively start to see progress in shrinking this average time to response of being 24 days now to being four days. Wow. You know, not being, yeah. you know, in, in that, you know, hypothetical example where you're, you're, you may be, you know, not able to, 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 to recognize or to book, you know, over a million dollars of revenue a day. Yeah. You, you do the math yeah. on that. It's $24 million if the average yeah. recovery time is 24 days. So, you know, that's got to be shrunk. And in order to shrink yeah. that, that was really kind of the call to action that, that we saw um, when Colonial first happened. Yeah, that the, res the, the response time, the recovery time is absolutely critical because what you talked about, the, even the reduction from 24 days response time to four is huge because ransomware is, I, I read a, a stat, I think it was from Cyber Ventures uh, in the last year or two, where one, once every 11 seconds a ransomware attack happens. Yeah. So the threat is there, but it's an existential threat to organizations globally. Ransomware as a service is very lucrative. How should organizations be thinking about ransomware with, with the failure is inevitable mindset? Because it sounds like to me, it's a mindset shift and a tool shift to help start dialing down the vendor confusion. But how should organizations really be approaching ransomware from a response and a recovery yeah. perspective? And how does Halcyon help them achieve that? Yeah. Um, so, you know, I mentioned this in, in, in my answer uh, a few minutes ago. First is viewing it more through the lens of ransomware is, you know, viewing ransomware is more of, of the next evolution of advanced persistent threat. So, you know, APTs, 
which is the acronym for advanced persistent threat. And I don't want to get too jargony, uh, given that we're really good in the cybersecurity industry at, you know, uh, clinging onto our jargon, but was really <laughs> back in 2008 ish when Google Aurora published their research on, um, you know, basically foreign governments getting persistent access to networks, whether it be in, in defense industrial based suppliers or whatnot to steal, you know, intellectual property. Um, and that really was a wake up call for the industry and for CISOs and practitioners like, you know, you are a target even though you're a commercial organization and you and, and whether you want to be or not because you know there that you know there's this thing called geopolitics going on around you and you are privy to that whether you want to be or not um you know so first and foremost viewing it as kind of that next evolution where it may not be governments that are directly engaging in the activity but you know, there is relationships there, disparate, plausibly deniable relationships there. And so they're very advanced. They're very um, focused on the outcome. And the big difference is, whereas, you know, maybe, you know, with, with APTs of old, it was governments or directly affiliated government groups trying to get persistence, trying to steal intellectual property. That the goal with ransomware is pure dollars and cents. Yeah. Uh, and it is, you know, with a secondary being maximum leverage to be achieved so they, they can reach their goals. The second piece <laughs> beyond kind of just that threat actor is understanding that the business model has a big, you know, a big difference here. You know, it's not just trying to disrupt operational continuity to target you. It's not just about trying to, you know, get access and stay beneath the radar and not be too disruptive and hope you don't get found. It is much more, let me get in, let me get out, let me get the keys to the kingdom from a data perspective or, you know, lock up your operation so that leverage is achieved. Uh, and then finally, um, you, you know, a, as I mentioned, you know, earlier is, you know, you got to really kind of, you know, security organizations and security leaders got to really change their mindset. And, and 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 it's really hard, especially when you're problem solving, but work backwards from what type of outcome, if, if, if you're going to approach this as failure is inevitable and that you you don't have 100% of control if you're going to have a really bad or really one of your worst security response days because of ransomware. Um, but you can control, hey, when and if that day happens, here's, here's what I have in place proactively that gives me you know, uh, you know, mitigating controls or visibility and operational, uh, you know, the tooling so that I can move yeah. from detection and protection immediately into response and recovery seamlessly. Yes. And that you have not only the tools there, but you have the partner there that, you know, yeah. there, there are little things that we look over when we're talking about cybersecurity, like, oh, there's going to be other stakeholders involved. I have a ransomware yep. event. The first call I'm making is to my cyber insurer. Once the cyber insurer's uh, involved, you don't get to call the shots anymore. Uh, oh, the cyber insurer calls the shots. I don't care okay. whether you're CISO, a Coca-Cola, or or another enterprise, not to, you know, that's just, just a random example, yeah. but it doesn't matter how big the organization is. You, you know, now you layer on top of that the new SEC reporting requirements that were just yeah. rolled out uh, recently in Black Hat. And it's a very dynamic environment with a lot of stakeholders Definitely. where a lot of the control and a lot of, hey, this is the most important goal. Everyone else, we're working backwards, like can get really lost in the shuffle. Yeah. Because you have other players involved that are worried about other things, not that they're not valid oh, sure. and valid things, but they're not the same things as the organization that's dealing with a ransomware event. They're right. thinking, how do I safely get back up and operational as soon as possible? And that Without is paying not necessarily how the cyber, you know, the number one priority for a cyber insurer or the number one priority for a retained general purpose incident response partner that you've pulled in. 
Wow. Chris, this has been a fascinating conversation. Thank you for, first of all, telling us about Halcyon, the catalyst to launch the company being Colonial Pipeline makes perfect sense. How you're really helping organizations to defeat ransomware in the real world, which is, as we talked about, an existential threat. It's a mindset shift, a tool set shift. We appreciate your insights and your time, Chris. We're going to have to have you back on the program because I, I feel like we're just scratching the surface here. Yeah, it's 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 an interesting topic, and I really appreciate the time. Uh, sorry we couldn't go a little bit deeper, but happy to be back anytime. Next time. All right, Chris, thanks again. We want to thank you for watching the AWS Startup Showcase Cybersecurity. We appreciate your time and your insights. For Chris Lamb, I'm Lisa Martin. We'll see you next time.